President Mohamed Buhari has reviewed the state of the nation, stating that Nigeria, in spite of its numerous challenges, is lucky to still remain one entity. The president told a delegation of House of Representatives that went to see him at the presidential villa in Abuja. Uh, he said citizens have a right to freely choose their leaders during elections, irrespective of party affiliation or religion, and that it must be respected. He reaffirmed his determination to serve the country to the best of his ability. He also went on to commend the National Assembly for its cooperation with the executive the president said he tried hard to get the 8th National Assembly to do the same for the sake of the country, but that it did not work. Hmm. Well, joining us to discuss this is uh, uh, Chike Chude. He is a political analyst. Thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Chude. Yes, thank you. So let's examine Mr. President's... Um, um, let's read between the lines here and also look at exactly what Mr. President is saying. He's saying that we're lucky to come through all of the things that we've come through as a country. And really, looking around us, we've had a lot to deal with, from the Johnson administration all the way down into his administration with Boko Haram and the Chibok girls and the Dapchi girls. And here we are with banditry and kidnapping, ethnic tensions, and we are still one country. And, and really, there might just be something to be happy about. We might just be one lucky country. Because look at the likes of Rwanda. Look at the likes of Sudan. And I mean, Eritrea is, is we have Eritreans running away from their country. But Nigeria has somewhat weathered the storm. Don't you think Mr. President is on the right part? Well, I am happy to understand exactly what the president means. Um, yes, I know that um, right now the country is um, barely moving forward as uh, one nation. Obviously, the country is not uh, united. The country is exceedingly very divided. And perhaps that is what the president uh, means. That the president is still saying this after he has had six years in power, where he would have um, helped to heal the wounds of the country and brought us closer together and united us even more. Uh, I, I think, you know, he says, the president is telling us what he intends to do to continue to work for the country's unity, but he hasn't told us what he has done already uh, towards achieving that uh, objective. Uh, you know, and uh, but I, I must point out that uh, no country is run on luck. You know, every country is run on the basis of deliberate, uh, you know, actions, acts of, of commission or omission. That is what and, and you don't think, and you don't think that the president has been deliberate in all of his years of leadership, and I'm talking about under this uh, democratic dispensation. You do not think that the president has been deliberate with all of the, um, you know, the the laws that he's put in place, the ex ex executive orders, or the fact that the president has spoken on several issues. You don't think that he's been deliberate. You think he's been passive. No, well, well, the president. I believe that uh, the president has uh, been deliberate in a lot of the things that he has done. But uh, again, what is the value of uh, the deliberate uh, actions that he has undertaken in the country? What are the outcomes of uh, the president's uh, deliberate policies? Are the actions positive or negative? Have the actions contributed in uh, uniting the people of this country? Have the actions contributed? in making Nigerians love themselves, you know, more, or have the actions uh, ended up dividing the country and creating suspicion within the polity, where people feel that the government is run on the basis of parochialism and nepotism and all that. At least in the past six years, people have an idea of, uh, people had an idea uh, when the government was brought into power about what they expected from government. After six years, people have an idea about what you know, how, I mean, they rate the government, whether Nigeria is united, more united today, or more divided. And I think the latter is the case with Nigeria. Nigeria is much more divided. And uh, perhaps the president, I don't know what it means that, uh, you know, we are lucky. It is not about luck. Um, the country is on tenter hooks. The country is in a very difficult situation. It is in a very difficult place. And I'm not exactly sure that the president has done so much. Uh, you know, in uh, trying to unify the country as a father of everybody. Because the, 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 the belief out there, 
you know, and the suspicion out there is that the president has not exactly been a father, a uniting figure in the country. Mm -hmm. But we might be wrong. We might be wrong. Perhaps we have been reading some of his uh, actions or inactions wrongly. But what we are seeing is a country that is on the verge of collapse. Uh, you know, and the, the president has not exactly contributed uh, to uh, holding the country together and uniting the various support that make, make up the country. I but don't think, I think at that level, uh, we might not uh, score him uh, even above 50. But, but, but the, Nigeria has always been a country that's divided largely along ethnic and political lines. In fact, even religious lines. And that didn't happen because President Buhari became president. He, he, he came to, to meet Nigeria the way it is. Maybe the lines have become more and more obvious under this administration, but is this his problem? I mean, the president's promise to fight terrorism, to uh, put an end to unemployment, to put an end to corruption, those were his core mandates. I don't remember his core mandate being uh, to teach us how to be united, to love one another, and see every other person as Nigerian first before we are Igbo, Hausa, and Yoruba. And I'm not saying that it, it's too far-fetched or too far-flung from the presidency, but can we really blame the president for the divisions that we have as a country? Well, uh, well if you say Nigerians have uh, always been divided, there has always been uh, some level of a uh, division in the country. There's no doubt about that. But we saw the fineness of Nigeria. We saw the best, you know, uh, uh, part of Nigeria in June 12, 1993, when Nigerians across all divides, religious, geopolitical, ethnic, uh, came together to cast their votes in an election that, that, that was adjured to be the freest, or the freest and fairest in the country. And unfortunately, it was annulled. And I think the high point of that um, election was the unity that we saw when uh, the candidates for presidency or for both uh, parties we are Muslim, Muslim, you know, where we had a Muslim, Muslim uh, ticket, uh, especially for the uh, SDP. And then the Christian Association of Nigeria was very okay with it. And they said, I think that then Khan was led by um, uh, uh, Archbishop Okoje. And, and uh, for him, it, was, it doesn't matter or it didn't matter if uh, we had the Muslim, Muslim president. What mattered is what they do when they get to power. Will they work? Uh, to uh, uh, push Nigeria forward along the path of progress. We they work to unite Nigeria. Today, Nigeria is far more divided than it has ever been. And I'm not saying that this has to just be, I mean, to do only with uh, the president. But uh, the president, I mean, the way he has conducted himself in office with regards to, for instance, the issue of federal character that is supposed to symbolize, you know, uh, our togetherness as a nation. And in terms of his appointment, it's unprecedented. No presidency. No, even under the military dispensation, have we seen the level of parochialism and nepotism uh, that has been exhibited in the past six years in terms of appointments, where to the extent that people, you know, begin strongly to feel that uh, the, the, the president uh, has an other agenda, other agenda that is, I mean, other than a Nigerian, a pan-Nigerian agenda. So this it has been the issue. And I think that the president has a very big role to play in trying to bring Nigerians together. And like I'm saying, I don't think he has done so much of that, and people are not convinced. And if we talk about division in this country, the separatist agitations in this country, all of these things have been highlighted more by the governance that we have had in the past six years. Let's talk about one of the major issues that the president highlighted at that event. He talked about the, uh, he urged politicians to respect, um, I'd like to quote him directly, people's right to choose their leaders. He did say that. And um, I, I want to take your thoughts on that. He's asking politicians, I'm sure he's himself included, to respect people's rights in choosing their leaders. I want to make reference to a conversation I had yesterday where uh, the pastor of the House on the Rock Church was talking about the fact that people who, the kingmakers already decide who would be our leaders before the election day. And then these people are put, uh, uh, put in front of us, and then we are only limited to the choices that the kingmakers have made. Why do you think that Nigerians are so averse, uh, this might not be the right word, but please correct me, to joining political parties, especially the very religious ones? But we're very quick to complain 
about who is being, you know, um, presented by any political party or who wants to run. Um, why are we so um, taken away from the idea of being part of grassroots politics or even holding a party card, whatever party it may be? Why do you think that we are so, um, you know, averse to it? No, you see, um, look, the, the reality is that the political elites have failed us in this country. Um, and again, uh, you, you might, that, but it, it, we can't talk about the failure of the political elites without also talking about the, fail, the failure of the followership in the country. We do not have a committed followership. Of course, uh, there are so many reasons for that. The poverty in the land, the lack of illiteracy, and all that. So many of these things have also contributed. The deep divisions that the political elites have perpetrated in this country for the purpose, you know, of taking advantage of that and keeping and, you know, uh, to keep the people divided while they continue to ride roughshod over, you know, uh, over, over the people. So these things have contributed. But I think that they, they say to whom much is given, much is expected. So the political elites have also been very, very responsible for what has gone on in this country, especially from 1999 to date. And we'll be talking about the big uh, two political parties because they are the ones that have had the way with them uh, to uh, take control of uh, the politics of this country. And with the control of the politics of this country, they ran riots, you know, with the country's treasury, with corruption and everything that, you know, that, 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 that has gone on, you know. And, and where were we in all of and, this? Yeah. We, keep, we keep making reference to these things. And I'm not in any way holding brief for Mr. President or the APC or the PDP. Uh, I'm just yeah. asking salient questions. We sat through all of these things and we saw them happen. What role we, did we play as followers in making sure that these things did not continue? Because this seems to be like a very deadly cycle that's killing us, you know, every day. Well, they, I, I think it is. It's a very difficult situation that you that um, I, 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 there's no hard and fast rule. There is no one answer that uh, will resolve all of the contradictory social, politic, social uh, political contradictions that we have in Nigeria. You know, the people have been impoverished over the years, and once you have a people that are operating at this like, at the economic level that they are operating, they have very few choices. So you have a situation where you know the political elite, uh, you know, now determine a lot of things. You know what happens in the country because the people themselves have been kept poor, so their choices are very, very few. There is just very little they can do. But again, that's the essence of what the civil society organizations have been doing: trying to create awareness among the people, try to lift up the people, try to tell the people the implications or the consequences of allowing themselves to be bribed to sell their votes and all of that. You know, but the reality is that I mean, somebody has said that a man is loyal to the person who puts bread on his table. And so when it comes to election time, the politicians will put bread on the table of the average Nigerian who is very, very impoverished. You know, so these are some of the, so the, the, the situations that confront the average Nigerian. So how we are going to get out, get out of it is something I cannot exactly tell you that I know. But we have continued to educate Nigerians. And the reality is that a lot of Nigerians are becoming more and more aware of what is going on. You know, so some of them are beginning to stand up to be counted, at least. It's from that knowledge that it is the knowledge that, that provokes, you know, the action. So we hope that uh, sooner than later, that many of them will begin to fight back, you know, to kick back against the politicians. When they come with their money, they will tell them, you know, they'll be able to tell them where to get off. You know, but I can, like I told, like I've said, it is going to be a very difficult situation because poverty is actually determining how, you know, the, the general populace respond to the overtures of the politicians, poverty and illiteracy. And so we need to be able to do something and to properly educate our people about their duties and responsibilities when it comes to their engagement with politicians in the country. And finally, before we wrap up this conversation, the president also pointed about, uh, to the fact that he was going to fight and end. I want to, I want to quote him directly. He vowed to end insecurity. Now, this is like the big white elephant in the room where, uh, I mean, literally in every part of the country, there is some form of insecurity and people fear for their lives you know it's happening it's either it's kidnapping or 
broad daylight robbery or, or, or abductions in you know in the northwest. It's, let me let me let me. Let me if the pre this is not the first time the president is vowing to Thank end you. Exactly. insecurity, you know, so, so, why yeah. should we take this one seriously? Could it be that maybe he wants to go out with a bang? Let me tell you, if, if you have to do a survey of Nigerians, I think about 90-95% of Nigerians will tell you that they don't believe the president. So it is time for the president to learn to walk the talk. It is not about because we have had him at every particular point in time. You know, he keeps on making these statements that he will bring the bandits to, to, to he will bring banditry and the violence in the country to, 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 a, to a stop. Nigerians don't believe him. You know, so so this is one time where actions should speak louder than words. Let him do it, and then Nigerians will say yes. He told us he was going to do it. But if you're going to, because the more the president talks, the more the president talks about what he's going to do with the bandits and Boko Haram and the insurgents in the country, the more the more deadly these people become. The reality is that they are in charge. The, the, the insurgents and the violent extremists in this country are in charge of what happens. They determine what they are going to do, where they are going to do it, when they are going to do it, and whether there will be consequences or no consequences. In most cases, there are no consequences. So we now have a situation where the government either begs them or the government gives them money, you know, uh, with, 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 you know, with the hope that they are not going to, that they will stop what they are doing. And what, that, what happens is that they are empowered more, they become bolder, and then continue more atrocities against the Nigerian people and the Nigerian state. So let the president walk the talk. Let him stop telling us about what he's going to do. Nobody believes him. Let him do it, and then we'll all doff our hearts for him and say he promised he was going to do it this time around. He has done it. All right. Achike Chude is a political analyst, and he joined us live from Lagos. Thank you very much for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right. We'll take a short break, and when we come back, I will give you my take. It's time for my take. Well, I'm here again to sound the alarm that time waits for no one, not even you, not even us in Nigeria. We keep waiting and hoping that some miracle will happen or maybe God will send an angel to, you know, become the president of this country. No, it's never going to happen. Why? The leaders that we have, we're very deserving of them. You ask me why? Don't get angry. The truth is bitter. We are a reflection of our leaders. We aid and abate these leaders. And we, you know, the, for every group of people that are criticizing and asking for dividends of democracy, there's another group with a placard supporting the mediocrity that has been exhibited by our politicians. And so, really, there is no concerted efforts. We're not in agreement. If we want good to be the order of the day, we, as a people, need to start doing good. These politicians are just a fraction of the 200 plus Nigerians that, that fill this country up. So a tiny group of people cannot lead us if we, the example, are not good people. If you want good governance, then you need to start governing well in your homes. It starts from the home into society, into our communities, because all of these people we call our leaders are a product of society. We cannot change Nigeria by just like this. It cannot happen. You can't toss a coin and hope that Nigeria will change for the better no it starts with you it starts with me and until we all decide that we want this country to change and stop playing to the gallery it will not change we'll continue to complain we'll continue to go around in circles and it might take 40 plus years in this wilderness of no good until we realize that we need to stand up and who says that when you are poor and you're hungry, you're angry, or the moment you're given rice or a wrapper or salt or little money, that that will suffice? Your anger is supposed to push you to say no to all of these petty gifts. How long do they even last? You'll finish the rice. Four years later, you're crying, you're grinding your teeth because you are the reason why you're suffering. But if you turn your backs on these people and say, take these things away, do the job. And if you do not do the job, we will come for you. We will get you out of that office, no matter how long it takes. These people will sit up. But until then, we'll just keep waiting. I am Mary Anacle, thanking you for watching.